All right, good morning, class. Good morning. Good morning. All right, class, today we're going to be talking about the Pythagorean Theorem and the trigonometric ratios. Now, I know that we're just starting to get into this stuff, but have any of you guys ever heard, this is kind of a review, the word Soka Toa? Has anyone ever heard of that? Yeah. Can anyone define, can, can everyone stand up real quick, please? I think this would be better. All right, the one, raise your hand if you know standing up. What does so mean in the so we know? Sine. Yes. Uh, yeah. What does co mean? Cosine. Yes. Tangent. Exactly. So there you go. Those three of them right there, the trigonometric ratios. So class. Yeah, you want me to sit down and cover it. at these pictures, I want to have a great picture to show you guys. Easy steps, Pythagorean theorem is a leg and a leg, and you have a hypotenuse. And this formula, which is a squared plus b squared equals c squared, was founded by Pythagoras. So it's actually kind of cool, his name kind of like hinders the, or goes with the theorem. And it was one of the earliest theorems known in ancient civilization, so it's a very important discovery back in those times. And like I said, there's the leg, you could call it A, like 1, B, like 2. And most of the time you're going to solve for the C, which is the hypotenuse, but sometimes for an equation you'll get the C, so you have to solve for one of the legs. And then A and B must always be added up together to equal C. So, any confusion so far? Is it only A and B that you add to get C, or do you have to do something with A and B? Yes, you can only add A and B to get C. Now, if you rearrange the equation to so say, take, you want to solve for A, you just take, the, you minus B to the other side, and then it'd be A squared equals C squared minus B squared, you square root the A with the square to get rid of the square, and that's A equals the square root of B squared minus C squared. Does that clear things up a little bit? Okay, moving on. All right, and this goes back to you guys, it was a great work class, the Sokotoa, sine, cosine, tangent. Sine is always going to be opposite angle, because the opposite angle is what determines the opposite side over the hypotenuse. The adjacent side over the hypotenuse is the cosine. And the tangent is going to be for the combined sine and cosine. So there's going to be no hypotenuse used in tangent. All right, class. And this is another example showing the adjacent, the hypotenuse, and the opposite sides. And we're not really going to get into this right now. We'll get into this in the later discussions, into the cotangent, the secant, and the cosine. And the cosecant is related to the sine, secant is related to cosine, and the cotangent is related to tangent. But we'll get to that in other future classes. All right. So these ratios are used when we have special measurements for right angle. The Pythagorean theorem and these trigonometric ratios can only be used together for a right triangle. All right. Now we're going to take a quiz. So, we're going to give you, I'll give you four options of the equations, see if you guys can remember what the equation was. Oh, good. Everyone mostly got it right. That's good. There, the one confusion is just beware of the minus and the plus signs. That's the only, the only thing that error that would be. Otherwise, you guys all did very well in this. All right. And this goes back to the review that we just did earlier. What does the so stand for in the SOCATO? Some of you. I wrote the word sign. But you guys did very well. You guys all got that O sign, so that's good. That's got that little tricky there. So, well done, class. I'm proud of you guys. All right, and the last question What was the name of the guy who found the Pythagorean theorem?
Nate Manning was a good man, but unfortunately he didn't find the theory. But well done, class. You guys all found those black tigers. It goes with the name. All right, class. If you guys can go to the name of the app, it's called EZ Trigonometry. It's spelled like E and the letter Z. Alright, so Sam, since you found him first, what was the first thing that popped up? Chapter 1, Theorem of Pythagoras. Exactly. And if you scroll down, it gives you an example, correct? Yes. Good. So the point of this app for you guys is it usually gives you a review at the beginning of the chapter before you get into like homeworks and like the, it gives you like mini quizzes. So, the coolest thing about this app is that when you guys press the go button, you can do a quiz, or if you see the little paper with the pen, you could use that as like writing equations to help you solve and settle. Like. So, which one's opposite? The opposite of the angle? So, 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 so since it's asking for sine D, D's right here, right? Yeah. So, usually when there's a number or letter after the sign, word sign, that means it's going to be the angle. So, you're going to have the angle from D. So what's opposite of D? 12. And 12 goes over? 13. Yeah. Thanks. You're welcome. So you can do it. All right, class. Has most of you guys gone through some, some of it a decent amount? Yes. All right. So the last thing we're going to do is just like ask, uh, this is a cool strategy. So 1 to 10 rating, 10 being the highest, being under, like you understood the material. What all did you guys, what would you guys write yourselves? I'll start with Nick. Um, ten? Yeah, ten being the highest, like you understood the perfect. Seven point three. Good numerical number. Eight. Got it. Nine. Okay. <laughs> Five. Five. Some of them were ones or fours, so that's good. <laughs> <laughs>